Today we're getting started on the installation of the Rubicon Express 2.5 inch lift on the 1991 Jeep Wrangler YJ. I went ahead and reinstalled the uh, 32 inch BF Goodrich All Terrain so I could get the measurement so we can figure out how much lift it actually has. Measurement on the front end, I'm just measuring center of the front wheel to the bottom of the fender flares and with the factory springs we're at 32 inches exactly. And the rear measurement is 33 and 7 eighths. And I'm doing the measurement the same way. Center of the rear wheel to the bottom of the fender flare. Now let's get started installing this new suspension. Okay, I've got the front up on jack stands, and I've got the front tires and wheels off, and I've got the jack just basically holding up the weight of the axle, so when I start taking things loose, nothing goes falling on me. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is, is pull off the, the shocks. Just got to remove those bolts, but I'm going to pull both shocks off, and also the um, sway bar links here. I'm just going to take those two nuts off of it, pull that off. We're not reusing that. It gets replaced with the um, disconnect style. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and pull the track bar off, which you see in my other video where I stripped down that 92 Wrangler. It's just a matter of pulling that nut off there and uh, pop that bolt through then this one actually has to go up to come out of that little bracket there and then just off the axle end over there so let's go ahead and get started on this all right so far I've got the uh, right front shock absorber off as well as the sway bar in link on this side and I've removed the bolt from the axle end of the uh, front track bar. So you can see there's, there's the shock, there's the end link. I ended up having to, to heat up this end here to soften that bushing up enough where I could get this little tie rod remover in between it and the sway bar and then basically just beat on the end of it with a hammer. A, a pneumatic tie rod removal tool would have worked uh, even better, but yeah, this is just what I have right now, so go ahead and use this. But now let's get started on the other side. Hopefully it'll be just as easy. I'm on the left front now, removing the shock absorber. Just figured I'd go ahead and show you that this one's a 19 millimeter, at least on this Jeep, it's a 19 millimeter. I know these shocks have been changed a couple times on this one. I don't know if bolts ever been changed. Pretty sure they're original. And at the top, there's a nut that you have to take off up there. I've already removed it. I probably should have showed you. But this nut and this washer and bushing come off. But when you're taking this nut off, which is 15 millimeter on this one, you'll you'll try to turn it, and the shock tube will start spinning on you. And it's got a place up here where you can you can hold it, but it's just easier if you're not going to reuse the shocks. Just grab it right there with a pair of channel locks. I mean, even if I was going to reuse them, it won't do any damage to it. Just scratch it a little. But once you get that nut broke loose, if you've soaked them enough with PB Blaster or some other kind of lubricant, um, you should be able just to grab the shock tube with your hand and then go ahead and get that nut the rest of the way off. But then again, I don't have a lot of rust anywhere on this Jeep, so people up in the northeast area, even parts of the Midwest, use salt on the roads, they might have a little issue, or if you run it on the beach. But I'm just going by how it is on this Jeep. Hopefully it'll help you out. All right, I've got the left front shock removed now. That was relatively easy. Now I'm going to work on this left front uh, sway bar link. Just got to remove this nut here and washer. 
and this one will just it'll pop right off no problem um, this one on the other hand I don't know if you can see it I don't know if this camera will focus on the dark but right here there's a cotter pin I'm gonna have to bend that over and pull it out and then remove this castle nut here but on this one since I ended up having to do it on the other side I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on this side and you know just heat up the um, bushing get it soft enough where I can get that tie rod removal tool in there and knock this one off just like I did the other hopefully it'll go as easy or easier I've got the bottom end of the sway bar link removed um, basically once I took the nut off I pried in here and popped it off to get it loose and then I used the tie rod tool to get it the rest of the way off of here and now I can move it around and make it easier to get this part off. bad thing is now since this side is removed tapping that tie rod tool in here is going to suck because this is going to keep moving <laughs> so actually the other side was easier that's alright though we'll get this one off I thought I was going to have problems with that left side sway bar link you know since the right side one was already removed I was afraid the um, sway bar was going to move around too much as I hit it with the tie rod tool and hammer but I, I didn't have it move at all um, three good hits with a hammer it popped right off um, of course I, I folded it out of the way now so I can work on removing the upper track bar mount or mounting bolt which is a 13 16 nut on the front side and a T55 Torx bit on the back side. So let's go ahead and get that removed and then we'll get to work on the leaf springs. Okay, that bolt came out with no problem whatsoever. Impact wrench definitely makes a difference on that. Um, now the track bar, since the other end's already removed, this end should just lift right up out of here, I hope. Yeah. Go ahead and get this the rest of the way out. Okay, there you have it. Front track bar removed. Now let's go ahead and not not forget to pull this little bottom part of the bracket out of here. Don't want that falling off on the road and hitting somebody's windshield or going in one of my tires. But just keep that with the track bar. Now I'm going to get started removing all the nuts from the leaf spring mounting bolts and just leave the bolts in place until I get the axle supported. And then I'll remove the nuts from the U-bolts. And then all I have to do is just hopefully either tap the bolts through or even if I'm lucky, put the impact wrench on them and, and, and just, you know, zip them right out, I hope. Either way, should be pretty easy. But let's go ahead and get these nuts off first. Um, the, the back one is odd. It's a 13 sixteenths on the head of the bolt, and the nut is a 7 eighths. Uh, I can't remember what the ones on the front shackles are, but I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, I got the nuts removed from the front leaf spring rear mounting bolts. Um, like I said before, it's a 13 sixteenths on the actual bolt head and it's 7 eighths on the nut. And I used a wrench on the nut and the impact wrench on the bolt head and it actually was trying to pull the bolt through the bushing and, and go ahead and remove it. Of course, I don't want it to do that. I want the bolt to hold the spring in place for right now until I get everything else removed like the uh, brake calipers and stuff. And then I'll just put the impact wrench back on it and zip the bolt right out that way but at least now I know it will do that I'm not gonna have to tap the bolt through but now I'm getting started on removing the nut from the shackle end mounting bolt I'm, I'm gonna leave the one in the frame I'm not replacing the upper bushings at this time and I am gonna reuse the factory shackles for right now. I mean later on I'll probably do something different but this is just for now. But 
hopefully this one will come out the same way. I am going to do the same thing, use the impact wrench on the head and just a wrench on the nut. That way I'll know if it's going to pull through or if I'm going to have to tap it through later. But the size on these is the same on both ends. You know, it's it's three quarter inch on each end or 19 millimeter. I mean, they're so close it really doesn't make that much of a difference. I mean, they might be identical. I haven't really looked into it that much. But I've been using 19 millimeter for a lot of the other stuff like the sway bar in links and uh, I think for the shock absorber, heck, even even for the lug nuts. But for right here, I've, I've got three quarter inch wrench and impact socket ready so that's what I'm going to use. But let's go ahead and get these removed. The nuts came off these just as easily and just like the ones on the rear. The impact wrench alone while taking the nut off and I was using the impact wrench on the bolt head side and it was actually trying to remove the bolt itself so just like the ones for the rear of these springs I'm not going to have to tap the uh, bolts out or anything. I'll just be able to put the impact wrench back on it and, and zip them right on through when the time comes. So right now I'm I'm working on getting the U-bolts removed and the spring plates. I've already removed one nut and then I forgot better take a video of where I've done so far. So I'm going to go ahead and remove them. They're also three quarter inch. So let's get those removed. And the spring plate is removed. Now go ahead and pull the U-bolts off. And now I am going to go ahead and remove the brake uh, caliper and strap it up to the shock mount for right now because I'm, I'm not doing the brake line extensions just yet. I'll work on that later. But this uh, leaf spring here is ready to be removed. So we're going to go ahead and, like I said, use the impact wrench and it'll just, as I back up with the impact wrench, it'll actually pull this bolt right out as well as the, the rear one. Then we'll be ready to install one new leaf spring. Okay, I've removed the bolt from the front of the leaf spring on the left side and dropped the leaf spring down. Now the only thing holding it in is the one in the rear and I, I was using the impact wrench. I did this on the front one as well, but just using the impact wrench and as I'm pulling the trigger on the impact wrench, I'm kind of just lightly backing away pressure and it pulls the bolt with it. Well, it, it'll get to a certain point to where it's not going to want to go any further. Then you just take a wrench on the back side, and as you're using the impact wrench, just pull it out with this wrench. Of course, right now, I kind of just set it back in to show you this, but I've already got it loose enough. But it's uh, it makes it a whole lot easier. Just thought I'd show you that real quick. I just installed the bushings in the new leaf spring. These aren't the kind you have to actually have pressed in or anything, you know. If it was, yeah, you can just get them in there with a bolt and a couple of washers tightening it together. But on these here, um, they're a perfect fit. A little bit of grease on them and just push them in by hand. And then install the sleeve through. Which the sleeve, I just, I basically pushed it through with the handle of a hammer. You know, I didn't tap on it or nothing. I just, just pushed right through and it was no problem. And make sure you do install the... Um, sleeve with a larger inside diameter on the frame end of the leaf spring which on these Rubicon Express two and a half inch springs is the military wrap end. As you can see here the original front springs on that 91 Wrangler were four leaf and the replacement two and a half inch lift ones are five leaf and the Rubicon Express kit, this two and a half inch kit, does use the same spring on all four corners. Now let's go ahead and get the new spring installed on the left front and then we'll get started removing that right front spring and get it swapped out. As you can see I have the frame end of the left front leaf spring installed. Um, had no issue with it going up into that bracket. Um, the bolt went about three quarters of the way through with no issue and then I ended up tapping on it just lightly with a hammer to get it the rest of the way through but 
I mean, I, I probably could have wiggled the bolt a little bit more and got it in by hand. I just took the easy route and used the small hammer. Now I've just got to lift the other end of the leaf spring up into the shackle and put that bolt through. And then we'll lower this side of the axle down onto the leaf spring and just let it rest there while we work on the other leaf spring. So let's go ahead and get the shackle into this one taken care of first. I've got the shackle end of the left front leaf spring installed. I did thread the nuts on here on both ends on the frame mount side and the shackle side. I just basically threaded it on until the the nut made contact with the shackle and until the nut made contact with the leaf spring mount on the frame on the back part of it. I'm not tightening any of this stuff down until the weight of the vehicle is back on the suspension because I don't want to have anything bound up that will create problems later on. Now I've just got to remove the four nuts from the U-bolts on the right side and then pull those bolts out just like I did on the other side. The right front leaf spring is now installed as well. I've gone ahead and lowered the axle down onto the new springs and installed the new U-bolts and of course reused the original spring plates. I've already torqued them down. I have not torqued down the leaf spring mounting bolts on the frame end or the shackle end. I'm not torquing those down until the wheels and tires are reinstalled and the weight of the Jeep's back on the axle so nothing binds up. Um, looks like I'm going to be calling it quits for the day. A uh, good size thunderstorm's heading this way. It's already started raining. so I'm not in any hurry to do this so I don't have to be out here in the rain. I'm just going to concentrate on picking up the tools and we'll get started again after this rainstorm passes or tomorrow. Now I'm going to install the new disconnect style sway bar in links. They reuse all the original hardware so it should be a pretty simple installation. And now it's installed and both the upper and lower nuts on it have been torqued to 45 foot pounds and the cotter pin has been installed on the upper nut. Next I'm going to install the front shock absorbers. It should be a pretty simple installation. Basically just one nut on top and reuse that same bolt on the bottom and then torque them down. The front shocks are now installed. I've already torqued the lower shock bolt down and I've also gone ahead and removed the jack stands out from under the Jeep. Um, you'll notice I have not messed with the brake line extensions yet. I think I said before I'm going to install longer brake lines, but that'll be in a later video. So let's go ahead and get the wheels and tires back on the front, lower the Jeep back on the ground, and we'll go ahead and torque down the leaf spring mounting bolts for these front leaf springs. The front wheels and tires are reinstalled and I've already torqued down the leaf spring mounting bolts for the front leaf springs as well as the front shackles. Um, now I'm just going to turn it around in the driveway and get started on the rear suspension installation. That'll be in the next video and then the third video should be the brake line installation as well as the uh, Jeep Cherokee pitman arm. Thanks for watching.